Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video, I'd like to speak with you about the death of the MC number. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos, where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses and your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers consisting of lease on owner operators and carriers operating out of their own MC authorities and running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk about the, the, you know, the death of the MC number. I guess I'll have to completely switch over our entire intro uh, because the MC number is just about done and here's uh, here, here's where this is leading right so it's because of all this fraud and all the stuff that the FMCSA has been battling with and uh, you know what where it actually comes from is the Mid-America Trucking Show. You guys, uh, many of you guys have probably, uh, you know, went to Matt's uh, out in Louisville, Kentucky just last week. And this is where uh, this information came about. Some of the biggest names uh, were in attendance, uh, including some of the heads of the FMCSA. So uh, I don't know if you guys have paid attention or not, but just very, very recently, uh, if you go on to Safer, uh, you will see that they changed it up. It looks quite a bit different when you're pulling up your MC or your DOT number, company names, things like that. When you're looking at carriers, brokers, freight forwarders, etc., the information is tallied a bit differently. So that was a telltale sign for me that things are changing because they haven't changed in over a decade, way over a decade. So the Safer system, Safer Sys looks very, very different now. Highly recommend taking a look at it, pull up your information, you know, go through it, make sure it's, you know, it's really important to look through your information, make sure everything's correct. So pull up your MC, take a look, um, and you know, take a gander, if you will, at the new system. Now, the reason we're bringing this up is because the FMCS system, system is going to be going through a major overhaul, complete, complete overhaul. Now, the reason for it is because of rampant fraud that's been ongoing for a very long time. This is not uh, this is not just over the last few months or even the last few years. The trucking industry, logistics, uh, just rampant fraud left and right all over the place always in the news and they're going to be doing a complete system overhaul where they're going to be looking at current registrants as well as uh, you know new registrants that will try to open up their own MC authorities MX uh, FF numbers etc um, etc et to or you know just like I said uh, becoming a new carrier gonna all have to go through that process and uh, this is going to be super super important moving forward because this is going to be a major cleansing of the FMCSA database now almost like a, almost as a joke uh, this was actually put out uh, saying some, someone registered a company and the email address that they used was WTF FMCSA at gmail.com basically poking fun at the FMCSA, WTF FMCSA at gmail.com. Now I'm not saying email those folks, but that is a real email address that was used to register uh, an organization uh, with the FMCSA. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Now, uh, with the ending of the MC numbers, we're all gonna be basically operating using our USDOT numbers. So it's gonna be your sole uh, identification, right? Your sole identifier is going to be your USDOT number. And some of the other things that they're going to be doing uh, are going to be some improved verification processes or processes, I should say, uh, that will be implemented. Now, as you guys know, uh, logging into some of the federal uh, you know, not necessarily FMCSA, but, you know, DOT regulated organizations logging in, doing some of these changes. Sometimes it just looks like dial up internet uh, from the, you know, 1990s and uh, everything just looks way too outdated, way too old, broken and absolutely ugly. And so what they're doing is they're going to be implementing all sorts of changes, uh, you know, not, not just aesthetic looks, but the way that the databases work, the way that the systems operate. And what they're going to do is they're going to force everyone that's going to be working with the FMCSA to 
prove their identity. They're going to be using either 2FA or MFA, which is two, uh, two-factor authentication or two-step authentication, as well as MFA or MFA, which is a multi-factor authentication. And basically what this is, is, uh, you know, you have uh, on your phone when it creates a little code that goes away after like a 30 seconds, you got to type it in to identify that it's you or they send you a text message. I'm sure you guys have seen that uh, tons of times when you're, you know, doing your packets through highway, through other organizations, or just about anywhere now days when you log in they have to send you a text message they're going to be implementing that but let's uh, let's remember this and you know when we say that government moves slowly government moves slowly because here's the thing AT&T the the phone company the telecom they actually started uh, that process back in 1996 and Microsoft themselves were using uh, two-factor authentication of going all the way back to 2013 so the, the federal government coming in now and saying, oh yeah, you know, things are tough. We're going to be implementing these new uh, technologies. Well, they're not really new. And, uh, you know, there's been ways that have been found to be able to scam people out of that, out of those codes and answers and things like that and really uh, grab onto their information. Now, the next thing that they're going to actually force you to do is to, you will have to prove your business existence, you know, actual physical location and that you are an actual company, U.S. based, registered everywhere. You're going to have to prove your IRS uh, registrations uh, and or state registration. So a lot is going to be changing and all of this to avoid and to battle uh, fraud. That is absolutely rampant. Now, I took some notes here and these are quotes the first one I'm going to give you is by Ken Riddle. He's a director of the Office of Registration and Safety Information at the FMCSA. Now get this, and I quote, freight fraud is at an all-time high. So that, that was Riddle. Every corner of the industry is experiencing fraud, whether on the carrier side, the broker side, you name it. We've heard from carriers and from the trade press asking, what can you do to help? We heard you. We're listening and we're going to help. So heartwarming. He continues in a different quote, same, same gentleman. We're going to run all existing registrants, everybody in our database, over 800,000 entities, he said. If they don't go through with it or refuse to or don't pass it, basically, don't pass, We'll start with revocation proceedings. We're going to clean up the bad actors. So it looks like the FMCSA is finally going to be going through their database. I mean, a little, a little, little, a little too late. Now, the next, well, the next thing he said is that if you've, uh, if you're asked, if we've asked you for an address and name, we don't want to ask you to fill it in again. Currently, the system actually asks for the same information over and over again, upwards of four times. Now, I know I should do it like that four times. Um, and, and, and in fact, I'll even stop here and I'll tell you this. That was a big uh, pet peeve of mine. If I'm asking you for information, has to repeat. That's not up to you to fill that out. I, I should be smarter than that. I should be able to copy that information to the next cells, right? And that's how our packet works. When you get set up with our dispatch service, you're never going to have to fill in the same information twice. I painstakingly went through the system to make sure that, that happens. Now, the idea is that if someone small like myself, a uh, you know, small to medium sized company can do that with today's software, why can't and why hasn't the federal government done that up to now? The next quote is he says, six months ago, fraud prevention, prevention wasn't our priority. Today it is. Makes me wonder, why, why wasn't fraud prevention not their priority? Uh, well, if that's not the case, what was their priority? Now it continues, because we heard from you and the industry and you know and how bad it is and how much it's needed, now they're gonna basically come out. They, they heard from you guys. They're gonna come in and they're gonna fix it all. And, and finally, uh, this is a quote from Tom Keen, uh, associate uh, administrator of the Office of Research and Registration at FMCSA, and I quote, uh, you might not believe me because I'm from FMCSA, but we really do embrace those things that are good for business and safety. So. You know, I, I don't believe them. Guys, I've been doing this for a very long time, over uh, well over a decade, um, and I haven't seen any changes. And for someone to come out and say that, you know, this six months ago, fraud prevention wasn't our priority, kind of makes, uh, makes me wonder and makes me scratch my head a little bit. But, you know, would love to hear from you guys in a comment section below. How do you think this is going to actually prevent fraud? Um, it, it, what, what is this? How is this going to help anything? So would love to hear from you guys in a comment section below. Please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. I'm going to switch over to camera. We're going to look over the loads that we booked for our customers and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of these loads. Guys, this week we have a ton of vans. 
A uh, couple of flatbeds and a reefer. Everyone did very, very well. So we'll definitely get started. Before we do, I do want to remind you guys this Sunday, many of you guys have been watching our live shows every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central. Uh, I've been doing a live show, a two hour show answering questions. You guys can actually call in live. Um, and uh, this week is going to be really, really interesting. Don't miss the Sunday show. We're going to have some cool guests, going to cover a lot of cool information. Alex is going to be back on as well as uh, we're going to try to bring on one of our dispatchers. So definitely don't miss it this Sunday and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central time for two hours and let's begin. Guys, we're going to start off with a flatbed. Uh, driver's Norman. He started off out of Athens, uh, Tennessee, going to Louisville, Kentucky with a 40,000 pound load of plastic. It was a general purpose uh, plastic, kind of a load, 301 miles, booked at 950 bucks, got him 316, a loaded mile. Then Carrollton, Kentucky to Fulton, Kentucky, a real quick short run, 43.5 on a weight load of dry goods for uh, Walmart, 300 miles on a dot, booked at 1500 bucks, got him $5 per mile. Then uh, Blythe, uh, Blytheville, Arkansas, going to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma with a 46,000 pound load of uh, steel beams, 489 miles, booked at 1,700 bucks, got him 348, a loaded mile there. Then Oklahoma City, Oklahoma to Davenport, Nebraska. It's a 46.5 load of shingles, 364 loaded miles, booked at 925, got him 254, a loaded mile. And then Ames, Iowa to Amherst Junction, Wisconsin, last load of the week, 45,000 pound load of uh, coolant in totes, 364 miles as well, booked at 1,100 bucks this time, got them 302 a loaded mile so very very short runs very very effective very efficient um you did a great job norman thursday thursday grossed six thousand one hundred seventy five dollars ran 1818 loaded miles very efficient ran those miles at 340 per loaded mile in today's market in a regular flatbed way to go norman excellent job sir uh next we got manual uh in a dry van uh looks like dixon illinois going to northwood ohio with a 29,000 pound load of printer labels, 28 pallets in all, 345 miles, booked at 1100 bucks, got them 319 a loaded mile. Then uh, Mommy, Ohio, uh, going to Lansing, Michigan. Another light load, 25,000 pounds of sound panels, 121 miles booked at 500 bucks, got them 413 a loaded mile on that one. Then Stanwood, Michigan with a one pick two dropper going to Finlay, uh, Ohio and North Vernon, Indiana as a final 25,000 pound, very light load of bottled water, 491 miles booked at 1749 and 50 cents. That got them 356 loaded mile. Then Indianapolis, Indiana to Maysville, Kentucky with a 43.5 load of cardboard boxes. Uh, they were recycled, but clean 175 miles booked at 585 bucks got him 334 a mile then Middleton Ohio to Kenton Ohio real quick run 45,000 pound load of paper rolls just 10 rolls in a truck 103 miles in total uh, ran that at 500 bucks got him 485 per loaded mile there. Then Kenton, Ohio with a one pick two dropper to Metropolis, Illinois and Kenton, Ohio back on a round trip run. So 30, uh, 13,500 super light load of self dumping. It, it was a self dumping hopper. So I'm assuming they probably just picked up a trailer. I'll have to get details on that. Now, needless to say, 937 miles booked at 2100 bucks, got them 224 a load of mile, an excellent job. And he finished off at a Lima, Ohio going to Morris, Illinois with a 44.5 load of consumer goods, 264 loaded miles booked at 600 150 bucks, got him 246, a loaded mile on that one. Excellent, absolutely excellent job, Manuel. Wednesday, Wednesday, grossed an amazing $7,148.50, uh, ran 2,436 loaded miles, did all of that at 295 a loaded mile, an absolutely excellent week, and uh, excellent gross, excellent races. You can see the guys that are running the shorter miles are making bank, doing an excellent, excellent job. So way to go there, sir. Uh, next is a little bit different one. This one's gonna be Brandon in a flatbed, very, very different approach. Uh, it's a flatbed coming out of Rancho Cucamonga, California, going to Rock Valley, Iowa, long run, 47,000 pounds of uh, steel tubing, tarps were required, 1,595 miles booked at 4,400 bucks, got them 276 a loaded mile on a ton of miles. Then Sioux Falls, South Dakota to Odessa, Texas, 45,000 pound load of uh, pond liner, 1,059 loaded miles, booked at 2,500 bucks, got them 236 a loaded mile on that one, and that was it. Six days on a road, he ran uh, Saturday to Friday, rolled 6,900 bucks in his flatbed, uh, ended up running 2,654 loaded miles, only 41 deadhead miles in total, and did all of that at 260 a loaded mile. $2.60 a loaded mile. Brandon, excellent job, sir, fantastic. Six days, almost 7,000 bucks, so excellent job there. Uh, moving forward, we got Reginald. Uh, Reggie's running in a dry van. 
Uh, Houston Texans to Vassar, Kansas, or Vassar, Kansas, 44-5 on the load, 16 totes of uh, herbicides. Uh, of course, a tanker endorsement was required. 723 miles booked to 1,700 bucks, got him 235 a loaded mile, then Edgerton, Kansas to Williston, North Dakota. Super light low, 17,000 pounds of ATVs, 1,014 miles booked to 2350, got him 232 a loaded mile on that one. And they finished off with Lankin, North Dakota, going to Corvallis, Oregon. 44,000 pound load of potatoes, 1,511 loaded miles booked at 3,600 bucks, got him 238 a loaded mile coming out of North Dakota. Excellent job. Seven days on a road, Saturday to Saturday, gross $7,650 in gross, ran 3,248 loaded miles and ran that at 236 per loaded mile average. An excellent gross income for seven days. Did a fantastic job, Reggie. Excellent job. Keep up the good work, sir. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to Jesse. He's running in a dry van, uh, Monrovia, California, going to Rexburg, Idaho, with a 32,000 pound load of potato sprout inhibitors. 908 miles, booked at 2,300 bucks, got him 253 a loaded mile. Then out of uh, Idaho Falls, Idaho, went to Topeka, Kansas. Super light load, 11,500 pound load of basic American KFC. Uh, I'm assuming just chicken and stuff like that. 1,123 loaded miles, booked at 1,750, got him a buck 56. Coming out of Idaho, going to Kansas. And then out of St. Joseph, Missouri, took a load to Great Falls, Montana. Another light load, 13,000 pounds of chemical products. It was non-hazmat and only eight pallets in total. 1,184 loaded miles, booked that one at 3,100 bucks, got him 262 a loaded mile on that one. Uh, only 105 deadhead miles, did an excellent job, ran for seven days, gross $7,150. Jesse's the driver on this one, 30, if I haven't mentioned. Uh, 3,215 loaded miles, ran that at 222 per loaded mile average. An excellent job, Jesse, way to go, sir. Uh, next, we got ourselves a reefer. Uh, driver's gonna be Milagros on this one. And let me just make sure I got the right stuff. Yeah, Canton, Ohio coming out to Moorfield, West Virginia. This is a 42,000 pound load, 19 pallets of uh, chicken wing cases. Uh, temperature controlled, of course, 24 degrees on a reefer. 247 miles booked at 950 bucks, got them 385 a loaded mile. Then uh, right out of Moorfield, West Virginia, Going to Hickory, North Carolina, 42,000 pound load of fresh chicken at 28 degrees, 354 loaded miles, booked at 900 bucks, got them 254 a loaded mile. Then out of Morganton, North Carolina to Lawton, Oklahoma with a 40,000 pound load of fresh chicken at 26 degrees on the reefer. Uh, 1,106 loaded miles, booked at 2,000 bucks, got him $1.81 on that one and he finished off out of uh, Henrietta, Texas uh, with a one pick, three dropper, going to Omaha, Nebraska, Clear Lake, South Dakota, and a final in Aberdeen, South Dakota. It's a 41,000 pound load of uh, seed inoculant. Uh, this was temperature controlled about 40 to 45 degrees on a reefer, 1,036 loaded miles. Booked out one of 2,400 bucks, got them 232 per loaded mile. Next on job, Milagres kicking butt. Uh, seven days on the road, grow 62.50 on his seven days, ran 2,743 loaded miles at 228 a loaded mile. And get this, only 95 deadhead miles. The guys were excellent because there are multiple runs here, multiple, not just one or two runs or whatnot. So they did a fantastic job. Milagres, as always, fantastic, way to go. Welcome back and thanks for sticking around. Guys, as you can see, the rates are decent. We got guys in flatbeds kicking butt. Reefers are a little bit behind, vans are also taking names, but as we mentioned in previous videos, this is probably going to shift a little bit, reefers are going to come up, flatbeds will continue to do well and better and better as the weather warms up. Reefer season um, has started, so you're going to start seeing more, uh, you know, more money, better rates, more freight availability, although uh, produce season is, slowing, uh, is slower this year than it was last year, and last year wasn't that good in the first place. So, you know, there's going to be a need for you guys to be able to battle through all the difficulties in this tight market where you have way too many trucks, not enough freight, the rates are low, and you know, there's just all these issues that are preventing you guys from being able to consistently run efficiently, effectively, be profitable, and you know, without having to have all the headaches of having to negotiate with brokers all day long and fill out packets all day long and sit on the phone and then also have to, you know, run the freight and you know, you still gotta use the restroom, eat, sleep, you know, it's kind of all important, right? So that's what we're here for, guys. If you are not making this kind of money, and, and it's whether you're a lease on owner operator or a carrier, we work, we work with both. You know, if you have your own MC authority, while MCs are still available, we can work with you guys. Uh, if you are a lease on owner operator that generally leases on under other outfits, 
we can work with you guys. We lease on owner operators. If you have your own equipment, come on over, give us a call or text us. Super easy. The phone number is 801-448-6363. And you can also get in touch with us on our website at aftdispatch.com. Get more information by clicking on carrier or owner operator. Fill out the boxes. We'll get in touch with you, answer all your questions. And until next week, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care.